We bid you greetings this evening of your time as you create time to exist. Allow me to begin by entitling this interaction, It's Up to You. Understand, as has already been shared, I represent a society that, colloquially speaking, lives on another planet. Therefore, you refer to us as extraterrestrial. Your scientists are now beginning to discover, enfolded within your reality, that there are many more than just one dimension of experience. We, in that sense, occupy another dimensional plane altogether. But for a frame of reference, were you to overlap your reality and our universal reality, we would be located, and again, perhaps this is somewhat arbitrary, for, but for the purposes of convention, approximately 500 of your light years in the direction you label Orion constellation. Our planet is a society much as your own with many differences as well. We have in our society embodied unconditional love, peace, acceptance, and willingness to function as a cooperative whole but not in any way, shape, or form in the cost or at the cost of individuality. Therefore, all individuals still maintain that sense of individuality. But we understand that one concept that is very possible is that there is and can be unity in diversity. Therefore, we relish the diversity and we understand that all the truths that exist within our society are true. And even if they would seem to be at odds, so to speak, with each other, individuals understand as a foundation that all truths are true. To the people or individuals that are, in that sense, believing that truth. So therefore, though we may not choose a particular truth, we do not forsake it, and this allows for a style of cooperation. We interact with your society, not because we have something to offer you that you don't already have. Not because we feel that we have something that is better than what you are already doing. No. We simply wish to share what has worked for us and what you also already contain, but only as an option, not with an insistence in any way that you need change anything that you are doing because it is us who are saying it. Understand that extraterrestrial means we live on another planet, but what it does not mean in any way, shape, or form is that we are better than you. No. And though we are in our consciousness and as a society perhaps more expanded than your own, we do not then extrapolate that to mean better in any way. And we understand that all expressions within creation are equally valid. Therefore, we honor you, and in that sense you honor us, by your acceptance to interact with us and allow us again to reflect back to you what you already know. Allow me to say that you can only perceive something at all to begin with if you first contain it. So therefore, should you hear any ideas from us or from anyone for that matter that you find most pleasing, understand that they only ring true with you and they only make sense to you because you already contain it. Therefore, we are not truly giving you anything you don't already have. We function as a mirror or a reflection of the portion within you that perhaps you can say many of you say you prefer. Therefore, it is again our honor to be ambassadors in this way from our civilization. But understand, one of the reasons that we are not meeting face to face at this time is there are many differences. We do not insist in any way that you believe who we say we are. It is not important. If you wish to, go right ahead. If you do not, then allow the information that we share to simply stand on its own. For that is really to us all that is important. The information, the exchange, the sharing. 
and it does not matter. We do not insist that you use it, and we do not insist in that way that you believe that we are who we say we are. We cannot prove it empirically at this point. You can only prove what we are saying because if you put into action what we are saying, I guarantee 100%, you will get the results in your life. But it's up to you. And it will be always, from our perspective, up to you. Hence the entitlement of this interaction. Understand, you have in your society a concept that many of you call, in your language, God. We prefer to utilize the terminology, as do others on your planet, but it translates into the terminology, all that is. For, shall we say, that is all-inclusive and leaves nothing out. Therefore, from our perspective, it is a precise definitional nomenclature. All that is, is everything and leaves nothing out. Everything in creation is part, by definition, of all that is. All that is, is, shall we say, the white light of infinite creation itself. And though it has, or all that is has, many extensions into what you call your physical universe, all that is also exists within what you would call non-physicality. So therefore, it is both. You are sparks of that white light of all that is. You as physical beings are literally prisms that break down that light in a particular way, in very individual particular ways. Perhaps as an analogy, you can say that this prism is three-sided and contains belief systems, emotionality or emotion, and mentality or thought. And as in that sense, you believe something or have a belief system, you then generate particular corresponding emotions. And then from those emotions and that belief, particular thoughts. With this foundational prism as a basis, you then perform actions. And it is these actions in a physical world, for there are many other realities as well, but in a physical world that is these actions which midwife and shall we say literally create the parameters in your own reality. So therefore, depending upon your beliefs, you will generate certain emotions, thoughts, and actions. And the actions speak the loudest, as you say. One of the things that we wish to share with you is that you do indeed create your own reality. And we do not mean that you have some minute control over your destiny. That is one truth, one perspective, which is very valid and can be experienced. But we mean you create it entirely, 100% through that prism. Therefore, you can use any one side of that prism to trace back to the fundamental belief systems that result in the creation of your life. It is up to you, however, to believe that you create your own reality or not. We simply provide this as a perspective to empower you, should you choose to, to begin to act as though you do create your own reality. For as we have said, your actions create your life in a physical universe. So therefore, if you act like you don't create your own reality, you create in those actions the evidence, the logic that reinforces the fact that you do not. So if your foundational belief system is that you do not create your own reality, you will create the effect, for as we have said, all truths are true. You will create the effect of not or seeming to not create your own reality. But it is truly up to you to decide that perhaps it is appealing to you to believe that you do create your own reality, for then you can change it if you don't like the way it is. And this is power. You can change it very simply. For any time something happens which you do not prefer, there are many treasures buried within a circumstance that results in you reacting in a negative way. For again, any emotion that you have, given any situation, 
is always a result of a belief. And you can use this to your advantage by understanding it. And when you have a particular emotion, asking yourself, particularly if it is something negative you do not wish to perpetuate, what must I believe in this situation to feel this way? And this is step one to changing your beliefs. Paradoxically, step one is acknowledging the beliefs you already hold. You create your reality, but you do so in general in two ways. Consciously, you choose certain beliefs from an option of beliefs, but also unconsciously. And this can mean, shall we say, buying very strongly into things that were spoon-fed to you as you were brought up, simply not realizing there was any other choice. Once you chose a particular belief, you then correspondingly generated the emotions, thoughts, and actions to it, and all belief systems contain within them a self-sustaining, self-perpetuating system of logic and system of evidence. So therefore, you always get what it is you believe. And in that sense, in that sense, believing truly is seeing. When you are willing to decide that you create your own reality, you can weed out the beliefs which no longer serve you and perhaps you bought into unconsciously. The unconscious beliefs that you have bought into that are negative and limiting will always in that sense have some effect on your emotions, thoughts and actions which will result in creating perhaps you can say realities that may seem overwhelmingly negative. Allow us to utilize the following point however. All situations from our perspective and experience, are a fundamentally blank set of props with no built-in meaning. You supply the meaning, and the meaning that you supply determines the effect you get out. So it's literally up to you, for you can always, in that sense, choose if a reality or a particular situation comes along that you do not on the surface prefer to understand that you do not prefer it because you are assigning a particular meaning and getting the effect, the negative effect back from it. Therefore, it is always in your hands to understand this. And it is always in your hands to perhaps you can say as a middle step, neutralize any symbol that is present in your life. This is neutral. It is overwhelmingly obvious what seems negative about it. But if I truly create my own reality, I understand that I have created this and everything I create can be of positive service to me. Now that I am becoming a conscious creator, I can also look at the symbol from the perspective of how does this serve me? And in that sense, you can then turn it all around and use any seemingly negative situation in a positive way. Also, the mere response that you have to a seemingly negative situation is again an emotion. Therefore, again, emotions being the window to your belief systems, you can always trace back why you initially labeled it negative to begin with. Now, one of the things that we discuss in beginning to align yourself with what individuals call your purpose in life. What is my purpose in life is a common question that we encounter in these interactions. Is a particular emotional vibrational state you call excitement. For excitement is the vibratory energy that tells you in a particular situation that whatever it is that you are excited about is most you. When we say excitement, we mean excitement with integrity. Integrity is the recognition that all that is, is all that is, and you are part of all that is. Therefore, everything is integrated. There is an entire integration of all reality. So therefore, if you truly understand this, you treat things with that respect, understanding that you are connected to it. So perhaps you can say one of the ways that integrity translates 
is that you have as much power as you need in your life to create anything that you wish without harming yourself or anyone else. That, in a sense, is, in a nutshell, integrity. So therefore, perhaps speaking of excitement alone, this may seem to some as hedonistic. But when you factor in integrity, no one is ever harmed. You are never harmed. Therefore, anything that you do, anything that you generate from your excitement, by virtue of the fact that you are honoring and validating that excitement within you, allows you to be of service to yourself and thereby, by extension, service to everyone else. So therefore, getting in touch with what truly excites you without the invalidations that your society will sometimes heap upon you, well, everyone knows you can't do that for a living, you may understand that you can begin to follow your excitement and act on your excitement. And that process of determining what it is that truly moves you, that gives you passion, that excites you, is the process of self-definition and a positive way and self validation. For you are now saying that you will not settle for anything less than you chose to be in this life. For make no bones about it, as you say, you have chosen to be here. You have an expression in your biblical literature that you are made in the image and likeness of God. But do you really all know what that truly means? All that is is multidimensional, infinite, and eternal. Therefore, so are you. For you are made in that likeness. And you are multidimensional, infinite, and eternal. You have no beginning. You have no ending. In, shall we say, your natural state as a soul, there is no time. Time is a creation within this particular reality. Therefore, when you do, in a sense, choose to participate in this reality, you focus your overall consciousness in a very fine way in order to explore certain ideas. But understand that you have existed before this life and will exist after this life and, as a matter of fact, before, during, and after are simply definitions and creations within a physical reality. They do not empirically exist, but we do understand that when you create the reality that utilizes that particular stream, that it feels like it does. So therefore, you experience, so to speak, the passage of time. But when you quote-unquote die, or from our perspective, transform, you still exist. For even again, as your scientists say, energy can neither be created nor destroyed, so to speak. You are eternal beings. The purpose, although you have in that sense led many lives, of a particular life is to lead that life to the fullest. You, although again you have many reincarnational selves, will only be this you one time. Therefore, you have the opportunity when choosing to be this you, even if you don't remember choosing it, to be this you most fully and in extension be of service to the planet and yourself. The following of your excitement with integrity will dovetail you with your purpose. When we discuss excitement, we do so from two perspectives. Perhaps you can say one perspective is the overall thing that excites you the most, so to speak. But also understand, although you create the illusion of time, you only ever exist right now. And if you think about it, when was it ever not right now? When was it ever not right here and right now? No matter where and when you are, it is always here and now. Therefore, you can always transform yourself right here, right now, for you are eternal. When we speak about, perhaps you can say, the second phase of excitement, we mean to begin to focus yourself in the now moment. What is 
available. The things you cannot act upon are not available in that moment. And if you place attention upon them, you will distract your vision from what is right in front of your face. If you reground yourself to the here and now moment and see what is available, what can I do something about, there will be many choices that are obviously available in any given moment. What we are sharing with you is to utilize choosing from those options in any given moment. The thing with integrity that excites you the most from what's available. The denial of this not following your excitement has generated a particular momentum in your collective lives that results in many things you say you do not prefer. You cannot get rid of the things you do not prefer for you are within all that is and there is simply nowhere to put them. But you can transform them or re-emphasize what it is you wish to experience. By beginning in any given moment to follow your excitement, you generate new results which generally wind up replacing the old unpreferred results, thereby transforming them, not running from them, but walking to the things that you now say are representative of who you are. These perspectives will enable you individually to begin to get a sense of purpose and fulfillment. To begin to allow yourself to have a sense of fulfillment and purpose allows you to become more tolerant of yourself. Allows you to experience and enrich and deepen your unconditional self-love. And again, to quote your Bible or paraphrase it, when it says love others as yourself, this presupposes that you do love yourself. The white light of all that is, the energy imbuing the white light of all that is, is unconditional love itself. The word unconditional means no conditions. It means you cannot lose the love of all that is, for it is unconditional. When individuals in your society speak about a judgmental God, that is not unconditional. That is quite conditional. And that is, from our perspective, creating God in the image of man, not the other way around. But when you simply, in your consciousness, ponder the idea of unconditional love, there would not be judgment, for the judgment is the imposition of conditions, is the assignment of unequal weight. And as we had began by saying, all things in reality are equal and have the right and reason to exist. This does not mean in any way that you need condone a reality that you find most negative. But in that sense, matching that negativity does not provide an alternative for your society. Matching that negativity reflects back to the individuals being negative that what you are doing works and I will prove it to you. I will do it back. Maintaining your unconditional love shows individuals who are choosing to be negative that there is another alternative and here I am the living example. It also in general leaves them scratching their heads. But understand, that you can only, in that sense, when you find that something works for you, share it with other people most effectively by embodying it, not by talking about it, and not by attempting to convince other individuals of something. If you believe in the power of your ideas, there is no need to convince them, simply present and share them. If you feel the need to convince someone of your idea as being better than theirs, you do not believe it yourself. And who you are attempting to convince is yourself. So therefore understand, if individuals hear many great ideas, many great perspectives, they say, well, that sounds all well and good. But if they see someone living it, 
then there is the proof that it is possible. For there is, shall we say, an abundance of evidence that it is possible to live negatively. So therefore, you can now begin to be the embodiment of the positive alternative. And that in and of itself is, by definition, not condoning the negativity. Matching the negativity is condoning it on some level. Refusing to participate and providing the alternative is not condoning it. One example is what you call war. Many individuals wish there to be no war upon your planet, for they hate war. But that is becoming the vibration of war, the vibration of hate. Simply, you can love peace. And that, from our perspective, is how to achieve peace. Not by hating war, but by loving peace. By embodying peace. By being the peaceful alternative. Therefore, you do have the power to make great changes upon the face of your planet at this time. But not by matching the status quo and utilizing your slang liberally, getting down in the dirt with them. No. But by showing them that you maintain your integrity. You do not insist that they change. You are fulfilled in following your own path and being of service to yourself and others, unconditionally loving yourself and others. It's up to you. We do not insist that any of this be taken by you. It's up to you. But it is one option. And again, as I have said, I cannot prove it. Are you willing to embody what we are speaking of? I guarantee you 100%, a guarantee your planet likes, that you will get the effect, 100%. Therefore, it's up to you. Allow us, before proceeding to the interaction, to thank you all for your willingness to literally act as ambassadors for your planet. For you are doing nothing less than that. And you are allowing me and the other individuals on this end of the communication as well to act as ambassadors of our society. We understand that we can only perceive a reality that we are the vibration of. And therefore, because we are unconditionally loving in our intention, we can only perceive a reality that is unconditionally loving. Therefore, should you as a society be willing to consider loving yourselves and each other unconditionally, this is the only way that we can interact with you face to face. Now again, it is not important that you do so, and we do not insist in any way that you do. But simply what we are saying is that you open up the doors to many possibilities by your willingness to begin to function as a global unit, as a unity in diversity, as an association of the planet Earth. It's up to you. But either way, it is our joy and pleasure and ecstatic privilege to interact with you on this limited basis at this time. For it allows us to, shall we say, feel you out? Shall we say allows you to feel us out and get some sense of how we live? And because you also can only experience a reality that you are the vibration of, the mere fact that we can have this communication cues you into the fact that you contain what we are speaking of. You can only perceive something if you first contain it. Therefore, if you did not contain what I am sharing, you would see the channel's mouth moving, but hear no words coming out. Therefore, take for granted, if the volume on your television set is up, that if you hear us, you contain what we are saying as an option. And again, it is no better than any other option. But if you say you wish to create the life that you prefer, then we are, in that sense, sharing with you one way to do it. And allow us to also say, if there were only one way, there would only be one person. And obviously, 
in the billions of individuals upon your planet. This allows you to see that each person is a way, is a truth, is a universe unto themselves. But you have graced each other with the agreement to co-create a seemingly common reality. Therefore, you can enjoy the forte's strengths and interests of those around you should you choose to do so. And now that you are reaching as a society a threshold whereby our communications can now be heard, we can tell you from our observations that you are transforming as a society. What you sometimes call Armageddon is simply a negative interpretation of a complete transformation upon your planet. Transformation there is right now. Transformation there will be. But in the times that this transformation was perceived, was predicted in that sense, the societies which existed back then only could understand that you could only change a structure by first breaking it down. Therefore, the nature and the tone and the flavor of these predictions is negative. But from our perspective, you no longer need to buy into this. And you are already within your transformational age. And have been very strongly within particularly the last few months. Therefore, because that many more individuals are beginning to empower themselves, there is a momentum that is increasing within your mass consciousness. For as you each and every individual have a consciousness, there is also a mass consciousness which represents all consciousness at the same time. Therefore, there are momentums, eddies, and flows within this mass consciousness itself. And there has reached a threshold of enough individuals self-empowering themselves to have a dramatic effect and enhancement upon that within the mass consciousness. Because you are all connected to this mass consciousness, you can, in a sense, ride on its coattails. And what this means is that it will be that much simpler for you, particularly within the next few months of your time, to transform in a positive way if you choose to, it's up to you. We once again extend our unconditional love and appreciation for your willingness to co-create this interaction with us this evening of your time. In general, these interactions will proceed from this point to what we call the sharing. In this particular segment, we interface and interact with individuals that are present in this interaction. Though many times individuals in your society will ask questions, we also in that sense request statements for this is an equal sharing. And though we have many things to offer, you also have many things to offer us as well. Therefore, do not be shy and allow yourselves to interact with us on an equal level. For that is always, no matter how you choose to view it, how we will view it. No matter what you believe about yourselves, we believe in you utterly. And we revel in learning that much more about creation. For each new society that we discover, each new society that we interface in, represents that much more that we know about all that is. And it fascinates us to see the multiplicity of ways that all that is expresses itself throughout the multiverse. We are all one consciousness and at the same time, separate consciousness. This is one of the infinite paradoxes of all that is itself. For all that is can experience anything that you can. Therefore, all that is can see itself as a singular individual as you perceive yourselves. But at the same time, and this becomes, shall we say, a bit confusing to a finite mentality. It also experiences itself as all the separate things in creation simultaneously, such as the multidimensional nature of all that is itself. So therefore, we understand that we are equal and we allow for the equal sharing between us, for it always enriches our exploration as well. 
Therefore, allow us to now proceed to the sharing. Alan, Ice. I'd like to, I'd like to thank you for sharing what you've been sharing with me. I've listened to you for about the last year, and two things that have occurred. One is the realization that I have the ability to interpret my reality. And I've used this over the last two years. Uh, about two years ago, I was terminated from a job. And what I also did at that opportunity is use that to tell myself the truth, what I really wanted and what excited me. And in the period of the last, I'd say, four to five months, uh, I've transformed every aspect of my life from being financially heavily in debt to being totally out of debt to now doing every day exactly what excites me. And I just wanted to thank you for giving me permission to tell myself the truth by hearing it and recognizing the truth when you spoke it. Now, before you proceed, understand we appreciate the sentiment for it is one of the things we choose to do in reflecting back to you. But only can we reflect what you already contain. And you gave yourself the permission. So therefore, again, we understand the sentiment and the tradition upon your planet. And perhaps your welcome is the appropriate response. However, are you to look straight into your mirror and issue that thank you? It would, from our perspective, be a bit more appropriate. Thank you. Proceed. The one issue that seemed to be the belief that I had to become aware of the shift was the object, the idea of deservability. Oh, all right. Allowing myself to truly deserve it all. And we teach workshops and seminars, and I've shared a lot of the transformation that's occurred in my life. And the comment that I get from people is, that's fine for you, but it won't work for me. Is there anything that you could share with us to address the issue of deservability, that we all deserve it all? Well, first of all, we remind individuals and ask them, do you remember having to do anything to exist? To which you generally reply, no. Therefore, all that is feels that you deserve to exist. All we are now speaking about is treating yourself with the same respect. Understand that the, perhaps you can say, lack of deservability is in general a response to unconsciously buying into beliefs that were fed to you as you were growing up. Perhaps you do not deserve this, you must earn this, and so forth are the types of statements that individuals translate within their beliefs as I am not a deserving individual rather than deserving in a particular situation. So therefore, perhaps again, you can remind them that they did not have to do anything to exist. Therefore, they do not have to do anything to continue to deserve to exist. But this again is very much related directly to the particular concept we began by sharing of unconditional self-love. So if they feel they do not deserve it, perhaps you can share with them that all that is loves them unconditionally, remind them that unconditionally means no conditions, and remind them that because all that is does love them unconditionally, they can feel that. And if they are willing to feel it, they can match it. And when you remove the conditions upon the love to yourself, this, shall we say, transforms lack of deservability into complete deservability. Is there something specific you are seeking? Well, the one other issue that goes with this that we hear a lot of is people being responsible for other people. If I have this much excitement, then I am obligated in some way to take care of. Oh, thank you. That allows us to explain this idea. You can only be responsible for yourself. For your ability to respond is your own ability. You cannot be responsible for anyone else. However, you can be responsible to them. And how you are most responsible to them is by being fully responsible for yourself. The result of being responsible for yourself is generating for yourself a preferential reality a preferential set of circumstances in your life that others can then see. And as we have earlier shared, actions are what get the attention. So therefore, your willingness to simply say to them, all right, 
I respect what you are saying and go about your business embodying what you are saying gives them the example to look back to you later if they should so choose without insisting that they do and see, well, this does work. Look at him. He's an example of it. And then perhaps you will be the one that they will wish to access to begin to do that. But being the example, willing to be the example, is being responsible for yourself and is the only way which you can ever truly be responsible to someone else. Again, we understand that being excited about it generates a wish to share it. But your strongest methodology for sharing it is to be it. And that includes the idea of not needing to convince them. And looking again, if you feel from time to time that you need to convince them, where you don't believe it yourself. Thank you and my love to you. And to you as well. Shedding. Ice. Teo. We bid you greetings. Greetings to you. Elon, many of us Earth persons are becoming more and more aware of the fact that there has been a hybridization project going on for some time involving human beings and uh, entities from another planet, uh, oh, wow. Zetas. Uh, a a two-part question, and, and that is one, how many civilizations come from this project? And uh, could you tell us something about, essentially, our own children? Allow us to simply say for now that in general what you call alien abduction scenarios, which by the way, we prefer the terminology temporary detainment, no one is kept, is a result of a particular society interacting with your own, and this is known to aspects of your government and has been for many years, that stem from a series of stars or star system that you would call Zeta Reticulum. They are the ones in that sense that are in contact in this way with your planet. They are observing, they are collecting, shall we say, certain material, they are collecting certain information, and they do so by agreement. Now, in general, individuals in your society, being again that you become physical and forget your totality, in that forgetting, forget the agreement. But understand, because you create your own reality, Anything that you are experiencing, you can use in a positive way. So therefore, are you to find yourself within such a scenario, if you, shall we say, have an abject terror reaction, you will have a paralysis. But if in that sense you simply understand that you must have made an agreement and begin to look at what the agreement is, you will literally open up a dialogue. You will literally open up the ability to interact consciously and blatantly for now that is all we will share is there something else yes the other part of the question is this i i read a scare sheet recently declaring that there were millions of zetas in underground caverns throughout this is not our perspective yes yeah this is a perspective that is perpetuated by certain members of your society many of them truly believe it some of them are misinforming on purpose out of fear for the society itself. But understand, underground bases there are, but they are populated by human beings. Also understand that though sometimes particular, shall we say, extraterrestrial entities may meet in these locations, they do not inhabit them from our perspective. So we thank you for the opportunity to address this, for you need not fear it in that way. Thank you very much. And to you. Shedding. Ice, bold one. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for uh, joining us this evening. Oh, thank you. One of the things that um, I've discovered of late is that fear seems to be the underlying emotion that most people are dealing with today and our Richard and I live a lot of our <clears throat> most of our life with doing what excites us we do a few things that need to be done because they need to be done like bookkeeping but most of the time we do what excites us now we, there are individuals excited about the bookkeeping yes, but I'm, do proceed I'm one of those I love the figures oh. and I love transferring the money so that's my excitement not oh, his I, however 
when we state that this is what we do, what we are told is that we are very lucky to be able to do this. Well, in a sense, you created that luck. And you are an example that everyone also contains it. Understand, they could not even see that you are this way, lest they contain the possibility of being that way within themselves. This is one paradox we find with members within your society. What you sometimes call enviousness or jealousy. For in general, this is a particular phenomenon that occurs when an individual sees something they greatly desire within someone else that they don't believe they contain themselves. Therefore, from our perspective, this is a paradox, for they would not be able to see it or appreciate it in the other individual unless they already contained it. So you can utilize an individual already doing something you already prefer, not as a jealous approach, but as a model, as a template. And if you, shall we say, because actions create the reality, copy the actions of someone already doing the thing you say you desire, this is one of the fastest ways in that sense to simply immediately transform to being that person. Do proceed. I'm curious to understand what the fear is that keeps people from doing what excites them the most. Well, again, fear is believing that a reality that you do not prefer is most likely. So in a given situation, individuals in that sense can look at why in that situation are they fearing? What do they believe in that situation? And then if they wish to change the belief, they can. But also, individuals have within them sometimes a sense that they have more power within them than they can handle. And from our perspective, whatever presents itself in your life shows you that you can handle it. You do not create a reality that you cannot handle. But this particular perspective that they are too powerful and may explode can in that sense sometimes have a fear reaction. Again, this also goes back to many times individuals not feeling they deserve what you are creating in your life, which then gives you the opportunity to discuss with them unconditional self-love. Thank you very much. Oh, and to you. Shut it. Ice. And to you. Good day. In a recent session, Elon, you indicated that on Sunday, July 26th, an important threshold could be reached here on Earth, and it had to do, of course, with reaching the number of humans on this planet uh, regarding the possibility of UFOs existing and also civilizations in the universe existing. More the idea that there would be enough individuals individually beginning to re-empower themselves and it was overall the concept of self-empowerment that has been enhanced. Now, when you are willing to empower yourself, you begin to explore the many other aspects of yourself that heretofore you considered alien. And this is always reflected for anything in your consciousness is always reflected into physical reality in the form of literal aliens from time to time. But what makes, shall we say, our interaction face-to-face -face more possible is the self-empowerment of each individual, not so much just the visiting of the two planets. That particular date, July 26th of your 1992 year, represents, in a sense, among other things, what you sometimes refer to as the hundredth monkey phenomenon, whereby there is enough of individual consciousness empowering themselves to make a profound effect on the entire mass consciousness and allow individuals who now choose to do so to, shall we say, have a bit more ease in transition, have a bit more enhancement, have a bit more of an accelerated effect in choosing to do so. Did we achieve that threshold on that date? Oh, yes. Very strong. And there okay. is blatant evidence in individuals of it Sometimes the form of, shall we say, shaking things up societally still takes negative, shall we say, overtones, but this is transforming as well. And from our perspective, the remnants, the vestiges of negativity are now bubbling up on your planet so that they can be addressed and integrated, not so that you can have the big one. You, 
you had indicated in that previous session that you were going to be in our neighborhood uh, at that time. Hey, from time to time, <laughs> we will directly observe your planet physically in such instances as that particular what we will refer to as a gateway or a threshold, which also has many, shall we say, electromagnetic energy overtones interlaced within them, will attract us for particular reasons of monitoring as well as other civilizations. Yeah. We are now in that sense, shall we say, back in our own neighborhood. Did you participate on that day or only observe? In a sense, you may say that once you observe by convention or extension, you are participating. I see. You cannot all... really, okay. in that sense, from our perspective, separate the observer from the observation. For, again, it is one event. But do proceed. Okay. Of Perhaps our... you can say unobtrusively. I see. Of our Earth's population of roughly six billion people, can you indicate approximately what number represented that threshold that we achieved? We are not in that sense receiving a precise number, but do perceive it to be under what you would call one billion. I see. Uh, what can we expect now to be different since we've achieved the threshold? Well, again, individually, should you decide to take back your life, create it according to preference, generate unconditional love and excitement, it will be that much easier. Also, perhaps to the disdain of some, you may find it more difficult to sustain realities which are not representative of who you are. They will simply begin to fall apart that much more quickly, thereby, uh, yeah. in a sense, providing an incentive to do so. Are you aware that the morning of July 26th, my brother uh, experienced an awakening? A revelation. We will discuss this another time. Yes. For now, though, revelation will do. But you are aware that that something happened there uh, with him. Ace, through yeah. the channel and your conversations. Right. But in tapping into it, we understand. Yeah, we, he's very anxious to set up a one-on-one -on -one with you <laughs> through Andrew, and I will be doing that. Thank you very much. And to you, you as well. Shedding. Ace, female, then you. Greetings, Alan. And to you. Uh, could you and the feeling is mutual. Um, could you please explain how uh, the, the concept of um, grace that we hold upon earth, that there is some kind of divine assistance that um, comes to us at times in our life. From your perspective, how does that go along with the fact that we create our own reality? Oh, thank you. One of the popular notions on your planet, there are many, is that man has come from original sin. Although, again, all truths are true to those who believe them, we do not believe that. We understand it to be a valid truth for those that do, but our particular experiential understanding is that you all come from original grace. Since all that is, is unconditional love itself, you are sparks of unconditional love itself. Now, as you are beginning to create your reality consciously because you decide to, you are beginning to understand this grace and allow this grace to, shall we say, erupt from within you. Very often you then ascribe it to a quote-unquote external source, but this is quite arbitrary for that grace is the stuff, so to speak, that you are made of. Does that answer the question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Oh, we thank you for the opportunity to at least provide the alternative of original grace. Even within your own religion that assumes original sin, you have in that sense embodied the Christ consciousness what you call Jesus as having, quote unquote, died for your sins. Now, what would be the point of that 
if you are all still sinners? A rhetorical question. <laughs> but the idea is, he was the embodiment of that grace walking upon the earth. Being a living example as we are sharing and did not say, follow me. I'm the only way. He said, this is what you contain. You too can express this. We can do it. We can transform this planet. I am an extension of all that is. You are an extension of all that is. Here is what it is like to act that way. Here is what it is like to unconditionally love yourself and others. I am the example. What you in general read about him was not written by him. And never did he say he was the savior. For a master, a true master, is always the first to tell you. And this is how you can discern a true master, that you are a master as well. That is, if you wish to call it that, the litmus test for that. Is that all? Yes, thank you very much. We thank you. Over there. Amen. Thank you. And to you. Ilan, uh, it's a privilege sitting here and um, witnessing you speak. For um, us as well, listening to you speak. For this is the first time, and by the way, for <coughs> us, every time is the first time. So we thank you. Um. I want to ask you a question about creating our own reality. I have heard or read that everyone chooses who they're going to be in this life for a particular purpose. I don't know whether that's true or not, but the the question is that 11 months ago, my son was born, and he was born with a very rare syndrome called rubenstein Taby, which means that he's motorically delayed and will know in another year, possibly two, what his mental capacity is. and. It's Largely, this will also depend on how you then choose to act around him. For environmentally speaking, you can support and enhance and self-fulfill a prophecy, or in a sense, you can simply treat the individual as you wish him to be, and in a sense, minimize any of what you are speaking. But there are many lessons to be learned by all involved in such an idea, for it will enable you to be of service, him to be of service, and so forth. Do proceed. Well, I feel uh, two ways. Grateful that he's here, that he's in my life, because he's changed my life profoundly and my family's, and full of fear and pain often, because he seems, I guess it's just what you were saying, that with my other two children, one is, I assume that their potential in this life is limitless, and because he was born with a syndrome, it would seem that his potential is limited. And in extension of that, in general, you will change the way you treat the individual. To give the individual the best chance to express their limitlessness, will be by giving the benefit of the doubt of treating it in a similar, shall we say, fashion with the parameters that are in place to the best of your ability. Yes, and I, th I think actually that's that's the road that we're walking on. Um, oh, well. And uh, what I wanted to ask is, is that, do you know, is that, is that, uh, well, I guess every truth is a is a valid truth, but that we choose the form in which we are going to manifest in this life for a particular reason, and is that what it my son did? And if it is something that is limiting in some way, that is what your society focuses on, and that is what is nurtured in the individual. But in general, limitation simply means, shall we say, a tendency to not do a particular thing. What is not focused on is what the potential of what can be done. And when you nurture what can be done, you may understand why they may have chosen a particular limitation so that they can focus in a different way more fully. Understand also the following. You have what you call free will, and we will briefly expound upon, in our perspective, what this means. You as physical beings do have free will, but also as a soul or oversoul or higher self, whatever you wish to call it, also, do you have free will? The free will of the higher self, shall we say, sets down certain parameters for the physical self. 
but they are very, very general. They are overall categories. Perhaps the category of abundance. Perhaps the category of polarity, positive and negative. Perhaps many other very general categories such as this. Where the free will of the physical self comes in is in how you will experience that general category. If you in that sense choose to experience negatively abundance, then you will in that sense experience what you call lack. But if you choose to explore positive abundance, then in that sense you will get that symbol. It is in a sense an analogy that we have used that your higher self may say you will walk down this particular hall. And we do not mean literally a particular hall on a particular road at a particular day. It is far looser than that, but as an analogy. So therefore, walk down that hall or have that exploration, you will. But how you walk down that hall is up to you, 100%. You can mope down the hall. You can slink down the hall. You can crawl down that hall. But you can also run down the hall, skip down the hall. You can ride your bike. You can skateboard, you can roller skate, you can fill the hall with water and swim, you can freeze the water and ice skate. It's up to you. And as creative as you are willing to be is the way that you can experience the positive side of the overall idea you have chosen to experience. And this applies to you and your child as well. Is that of service? Yes, it is very much so. Thank you. And I guess <clears throat> we thank you and thank the child. Yes, I will. Thank you. And to you. Shut up. Ace. Greetings. Um, I have just the sharing. All right. Do share. I, uh, and thank you. I was at a uh, channeling last Friday, um, where this vortex is in Southbury at the place. And, um, we ended up going through the beam up process which is the astral projection process out of our bodies. Well, how exciting. Yes. Did you have a good trip? Oh, we had, a, we had a very good trip. And we came back, each of us, with different information. And one of the things I remember was Golden Domes, a uh, city of Golden Domes. And um, I saw these human-type beings wearing suits of black and white. And they, were all, they don't usually wear these suits, only on special occasions. Hey. And, um, I don't recall the civilization, but I ended up being asked by the channel to, ch to, to close my eyes. And I did so. And I all of a sudden was channeling information out about what was going to happen on this property and also, uh, no definitive time period, but just in terms of, uh, I was explaining the preparations for the pod ships to land. And I was coming out with all this information that I didn't even know existed. And well, obviously you did, but now you are sharing it. Yes. And, um, we were told that there is, there will, there's a dome, uh, around this property now. So when the time comes of the, the, the ships of the little ships to be able to land face meeting to meeting with those on the property, um, that the property will be having its own, uh, definition of a climate so to speak, outside the inside the perimeters, the climate will be stabilized and it will not be the same as, let's say, outside the property area because of this dome that they've uh, created around this particular property of the vortex. Could you expand, expand on this a little bit? Only with the following word, Findhorn. And that is all we will say. Fin we will allow you to continue in that sense, to explore this, and you will come back and perhaps report again. Okay. Well, it will make sense to the channel. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the person coming through, I think it was Zatar. Uh, All they, right. Uh, does that ring a bell with you, that individual? Not a personal acquaintance, but we trust you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Elon. And to you. Before the next sharing, may I ask you a question? Now, now, is anyone present? Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Are you having a good time? Yes. yes. Oh, thank you. Shut up. Ace. Hello, Alon. Greetings and good day. And by the way, in case you wondered why I say good day, 
upon my planet, it is day. Good. <laughs> day or night, I'm always happy to see you. Oh, thank you. I was thinking recently. So to speak. Yes, yes. I'm a bit shorter than this. <laughs> <laughs> I am also a bit balder. <laughs> You're also a lot greener. <laughs> Not really. More <laughs> whitish gray. <laughs> okay. But we... perhaps you are speaking of the electromagnetic aura, and yeah. we thank you. Oh, very good. Do proceed. Uh -huh. I was thinking recently that um, in my quest for a more preferential life, I've oh. examined a lot of the systems on this planet, all with great benefit. But I feel that I would not have gotten past a certain point without availing myself of your information that you so graciously share with us. Well, thank you for attracting yourself to such information. You have done. Yeah, I, and I'm very happy about that. And as you say, the more I use it and act on it, the more I experience it. Well, thank and you. And it works. It Can you provide works. a particular example that may be helpful to others? Well, uh... I'm always using statements like every situation is neutral, I assign the meaning, and I understand that unconditional love for myself and everyone means don't judge. <laughs> Have you began to remove the conditions? Yes. Have you found yourself in a situation that you blatantly, formally would have labeled negative to find a positive meaning, and thereby, although it seemed initially positive, negative, you got a positive effect? Yes. Oh, thank you. Definitely. Um, I was wondering, I did have a question. I've noticed on TV that recently they are proliferating with these telephone numbers to call for psychic information. All right. And I've never called one, but I was wondering if that if they put people in touch with truly expanded consciousness. Some yes. Some yes and some not. Okay. So sometimes it really is uh, valuable. Oh, and you can perhaps allow yourself and your trust and your discernment to attract you should you find that to be an exciting symbol to the one in that sense that will benefit you most. But understand, no matter what, you will be benefited. For you can use anything. Again, even if you totally and entirely disagree with something, assuming it is a extraneous does not serve you. But realizing that even the fact that you disagree with it allows you to define yourself that much more finitely, that much more concretely, you may understand that the things that you do not prefer are just as much service to your self-discovery as the things that you do. Well, for me, when I have questions, I ask you. <laughs> well, <laughs> understand, if you wish to be as technical as possible about it, when you converse with what you perceive to be me, if you really wish to boil it down to it, you are talking to yourself. So you said. <laughs> All right. Thank you. We will much. validate your perspective. <laughs> and we thank you. Thanks. Shutting. Hola. Ice. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier that you enjoy observing our planet, and um, I'm from time to time. Well, I'm wondering exactly what you're seeing about us, or, or what your perspective is on our on our society and culture. We perceive that your society is again in the midst of the, shall we say, most significant grand transformation in its entire history. For what you are transforming from is limited beings. In fact. So much have you, shall we say, gotten it down that you are masters of limitation itself. But what you are transforming into, so to speak, some of you are already, shall we say, having one foot in each door, is limitless beings as individuals and eventually globally. When in that sense you begin to do this, you will find many things to change upon the face of your planet. One that will be, shall we say, the most noticeable at first will be your perception and your relationship and experience of time itself. For you have a very interesting utilization of time in your society, whereby you assume that now, the only time there is right now, is the result of the past. 
Now, the past may lead to now, but it is truly not the result of that past. And when you even are discussing a past, you are recreating that past right now. So when you begin to understand that the past has no hold upon you other than what you assign it, you liberate yourself. And you also then transform your relationship to time itself. So we are exploring the many changes that are occurring. We are exploring the many, shall we say, transformations of attitude, transformations of perspective and experience. And this is very fascinating to us. At the same time, we maintain a physical distance. In a sense, you can say perhaps our motto is, shh, baby being born. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice. Thank you. Oh, we thank you for the birth and on some level, the invitation to behold the sight of the emergence of your society anew from the chrysalis that you are now creating. We thank you. Shut it. Hello. Hey, smile. Greetings. And to you. And Lana, in our culture, there's a lot of anxiety about uh, what life's about, uh, what the ultimate objectives are, how one should live one's life, what one should accomplish. Is there really anywhere to get to? Well, literally, no. For you are always here, you are always now, and by extension, your reality moves around you. But this does not mean that you cannot create experience and appreciate experiencing the experience just because you as beings are simply you are but you can in that sense express that isness in many ways and this is one option now again we bring you back when discussing what's it all about what's my purpose to your excitement for that excitement is your own personal barometer your own personal compass needle pointing to the magnetic north of who you chose to be. It is the reminder from your higher self. This is who you are. This is who you are. You have chosen to forget many things, but here are the markers. Here are the cones. Here are, shall we say, the aisles that will lead you to what you have in that sense chosen to experience just to experience it. Is that unsettling? Is that unsettling? No, that's very helpful. Oh, thank you. So, so in any given moment, if one evaluates the choices available to him right now and chooses that which excites him with most. With integrity. Which with means integrity, cognizance of your agreements as well. But do proceed. Then one has the opportunity to experience whatever it is that's appropriate for them right now. There is no guesswork. It's simply choice. Is that true? Absolutely. And understand this is why you always have the ability and the ultimate control of your reality. For even if the choices are, shall we say, all negative, you always still have the ability to choose. And you will find 99.99999% of the time that they are not ever all negative. And even when those things show up that are easily, e easily, easily termed negative, like a toothache, even that serves us and leads us to an experience that we do prefer. Is well, that if so? you use it. Now, again, you are, shall we say, by nature, consciousness. And you are consciousness exploring, projecting into a physical reality. But understand that because everything around you is also consciousness, though it may seem quite solid, Everything that you perceive as a thing or a situation is literally a symbol within consciousness. Mm -hmm. Something perhaps you can say you are telling yourself. So therefore, if something comes along and you assume this is extraneous, it doesn't belong, you create frustration. But if you understand that nothing by definition can be extraneous, if it exists, it exists, you then allow yourself to see what message it delivers, what it forces you to look at in the case of something of a negative symbol of dis-ease as that, in that if you look at what it forces you to look at and benefit from it, and in the future decide to look at it first, 
you will no longer need to create the symbol to force you to look at it. And once you look at any issue that you have created a symbol to represent, it transforms. There are no extraneous creations and therefore it has no reason to hang around. So therefore you can transform these symbols by allowing them to deliver the message that you created them to deliver. And if it forces you to look at something, be willing from now on to simply look at it without having to force yourself. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Could you describe what it's like to experience being here now? All right, stand up. Turn around. <coughs> Sit down. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> do you understand? I do understand. Oh, thank you. Thank you. One of the ideas that your society will generally buy into is the need to validate anything you are doing by a complexity. Now, you can do this, and again, as we have said, it is a truth, and it is true as well. But another truth that we wish to introduce to you is that it is that simple. And anything can be that simple to actually do. Now, reality is complex, it is rich, it is diverse. But the doing, the living, is very simple and can be that simple if you allow it to be. And we thank you for providing the example. Thank you. Next sharing. Ace. You've said many times that the present is not a direct result of the past. Why is it that we see experientially. experientially? Why is it that it seems people have a fascination with the past and a resistance to change? Why is there a, it seems like even though it might be uncomfortable, it's familiar, and they prefer that choice than making a choice that might be something they haven't allowed themselves to experience. You tell me. This is one of our fascinations with your society. <laughs> what is your theory on the matter? It's not an exploration that I deal in. I love change, and it's not... I actually have been asking this for a long time, and I was hoping you could enlighten me or someone here. Understand the paradox. Change is one of the only constants in creation. Therefore, change, perhaps you can say, is the rule, not the exception. Ultimate stability is an actuality from the allowance of the change. But your society equates stability with staying the same, which is impossible. Does that at least further you along the lines of exploring? Yes. Is also part of this the agreement of our exploring the concept of time and timing? To some degree, but perhaps indirectly. Would you also comment on the idea of synchronicity that everything occurs in perfect timing? Well, everything occurs in perfect timing. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. Just having some fun. <laughs> the idea is this. There literally is nothing extraneous. Now, if you label something extraneous, you can feel the effects of it seeming to be extraneous. But everything belongs because all that is is one event. Everything within it is interconnected. And things which seem to have nothing to do with each other do. So the bottom line of how this translates into your language as a usable concept is there are no accidents. There are coincidences, which are incidences occurring at the same time, but you can always use it all, and your willingness to interpret it as belonging gives you the key to unlock what you can get as a service from it. Does that help? Very much. Thank you. And to you, sharing. Ace. Yes. Uh, I had a couple of questions before, and I didn't know what they were. Greetings. Um, oh, all right. Do proceed with one. Okay. Uh, actually, Richard handled a lot of them. Um, I was thinking of the film strip ana analogy that you use uh, from time to time. 
in terms of describing how the present is not a result of the past. And that's about it. Well, <laughs> that, thank you. That's, I wanted to see if you, you know, what each moment that. is a discrete package, is a discrete kit, if you will, has in that sense an analogy to the, shall we say, frames on your strip of film. When you run them through, they seem continuous, but they literally are their own universal event. So therefore, when you say that a frame way back there has something to do with this frame here, you then create the relationship, you then act that way, and you then get that effect. But that is the only reason that past has any bearing on the present once you are in the present. Therefore, it is up to you. It is up to you all at every given moment. You get to choose. You get to choose the way you interpret your reality. You get to choose the attitude that you then assume from that interpretation. And you get to perform the actions that then are representative of that interpretation and that attitude. If you have a negative interpretation, you have a negative attitude, and that can only lead to a negative action, which can only lead to a negative result. If you choose the positive, then your interpretation is positive, your attitude is positive, your actions is positive, and even in the same situation, you can only get a positive effect. Truly, one of the joys of creation itself is the recognition that we are sharing to you that it is up to you. For this means that everything you do is a choice and Alone, that may sound a bit burdensome, but understand that choice means there are other choices. In closing, one particular perspective that we have found most helpful. Because your actions do create your reality. If you find in your day-to-day -day reality that you have an initial negative interpretation and begin to assume a negative attitude, you are acting from only one option, and that option is negative. If you will begin to simply, simply, whenever you find you are interpreting something negative, before you act, before you act, always at least give yourself one positive alternative you will find that that will break what you have formerly considered to be the momentum of the quote-unquote automatic negative behavior. For once you have in front of you an option which is negative side by side on the same table with something which is positive, it is not too difficult to choose the positive. The negative, shall we say, loses its hold. It is no longer the only option. So therefore, if you are willing to always, before acting on anything, provide at least one positive alternative and use your excitement to choose, it's up to you. But we assume you will find it quite simple to choose the positive and then no matter what your initial interpretation was, because you redefined it and acted according to the preferential belief, you will get the preferential reality. So, in a sense, you can say, perhaps, again, in your slang, look before you leap. And perhaps allow yourself to have at least one other spot to leap to. <laughs> At this timing, we again express our unconditional love and appreciation for your willingness to act as ambassadors of your civilization. And allow me to act as an ambassador of our respective civilizations. We love you. We love you unconditionally, and it is our ecstatic pleasure to interact with you. We bid you a most ecstatic dream life and life dreams, and good evening.